Yo, yo, what's up, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby. And uh, I'm gonna be showcasing Infernity Extra Link today. Um, unfortunately, you know, RIP Invoker. We did lose Invoker on the most recent ban list, uh, making it extremely difficult to FTK. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still possibilities. There's still minuscule chances that you can hit or miss with the FTK build. But due to that simple fact, I really decided to um, opt out from FTK, modify my deck list, and craft it for um, extra linking. Um, the actual only change to the list is you take one archer out and put in the barrier. Uh, everything else is pretty much still the same. Um, every time you are able to FTK, you can always do the U board. Uh, you can do a tad more than that, just depending on how you use your resources, uh, depending on what optimal hand you have. If your hand is better than average, you can do a lot more than, you know, just the U-board. Um, but naturally, uh, if you're able to do what the deck's supposed to do, you will make a U-board. You'll get Trigate co-linked uh, by three, and you'll have Barrier live. So you have two negates, and you will have already gunblood your opponent for two, and you'll give them an Ibli. So... There's a lot of, you know, stuff that you have established through that combo. There's a lot of minuscule interruptions here and there. Overall, in a cumulative advantage, um, you kind of overcome your opponent in that aspect. But there's still a chance they can come back if they, you know, spear mold you. Uh, but it's highly unlikely that they're mainboarding it in their, um, you know, like as, as far as game one goes. So overall, I think that the deck's awesome. You know, Infernities are scary. They still have all kinds of um, different hybrid variations that you can do with the deck. There's still so many ways that it can be played. So many unexploited aspects of the deck still to this day. But anyways, let's hop into my list. So we're going to start off with our monkey board, uh, Crackhead Stratos Joker, and the Cheerio that he has to eat every day uh, in order for this deck to remain healthy and fair and balanced. Uh, so we have that. We also have a very small Magician package. Uh, just being harmonizing one black thing, double purple poison. This engine is great. I felt that one of the better ways to play Infernities uh, was actually by exploiting the Pendulum mechanic because Pendulum Summoning is not only amazing, a very, very high ceiling summoning mechanic, but it enables you to do what Infernities need to do. You need to empty your hand out, my brother. You need to have no cards in hand in order to win. Isn't that very backwards? Uh, your card economy has to hit rock bottom in order to win, where other decks need a massive hand to do what they need to do. But this deck completely plays opposite, um, nowhere near corresponding to the average playstyle of every other deck. That's what makes Infernity so unique and awesome. Um, so my Crew Themon is really the uh, Pendulum Magician engine because um, the harmonizing makes a huge difference. Time Star Magician being able to search Summoner Monk. Very minuscule and different interactions in the deck that kind of overall make it to where the Pendulum Magician engine can assist you in more ways than one. Uh, so we have all the Pendulum Monsters. Um, and sometimes you can just do your extra link just by having Dark Worm. Because you can scale him, get the Gate Zero, and you can just completely go off from there. And then we have uh, some really, really good starter cards. We have Triple Armageddon Knight. One of my knights is a Greffer. Um, because I lent my Armageddon to my teammate Eric, and he is not giving me my cards back. And then we also have Triple Summoner Monk. Summoner Monk is amazing. Uh, Monk can even equal Armageddon Knight if you just want to um, extend more, just to get more monsters on field. You can take that route of a Monk to Knight, Knight into, you know, Eris, Eris into Archfiend. And um, that will allow you to get a Dark Spellcast and a Dark Warrior if you just need to make Curios to finish up your combo. You do a lot of foolishing, a lot of uh, dumping from deck to grave to set this deck's combos up. It's really fun once you get going. It's uh, very degenerate, very loopy, um, being that you're recycling and rinsing and washing and repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so we have those. You maximize on them because you need to open up with them. If you cannot open up with them, you can always make Time Star and just search out your Monk and do your combo there. You can also always Curios your Eris. Eris will get its effect to search Archfiend. There's a lot of ways you can do the combo. Um, overall, if you can empty your hand and summon an Archfiend, you can pretty much do what the deck is supposed to do. Long story short. Uh, then we have the Infernity Monsters. We have Triple Necromancer. We have Double Mirage, which is something completely different from every Infernity list. Now, my reason for playing Mirage at 2 is very simple. Um, having two Mirage in the main deck allows you to play through um, two hand traps 
and they have to be specific. It cannot be droll, but if it is double Valor, if it is Valor Impermanence, if it is Ghost Ogre Ash, if it is Ash Valor, Ash uh, Ogre, or, you know, Ogre Impermanence, any combination of hand traps that are basically not, even Winter uh, uh, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, um, anything that is not droll, the second Mirage in the main deck can play through that interruption. Uh, multiple hand traps. If your opponent goes so as your firewall, you chain his effect, bounce yourself back to extra deck. And then if your opponent, for example, impermanences uh, your tomahawk, you know, for example, like your tomahawk to summon the multiple tokens, the interactions in the middle of your combo, you'll still be able to get your entire U-Link board because of Mirage. Why? Because Mirage actually is the equivalent of three, well, I'm sorry, four Link 2s. Um, which is incredible because that's a vast majority of your U-Link board. Anyway, being able to summon four Link 2s just because of Mirage. Why? Because Mirage can go uh, double Necromancer, Necromancer for Artfiend, Link, Necromancer for Artfiend, Link, and you end up searching out the other Mirage, and you just continue your combos. And then your Firewall can bounce the Mirage, and that's why you can make the four Link 2s because you make two off of one. The Firewall bounces it from grave to hand. You special it again. You just keep doing this loopy thing that the Infernities are infamous for doing. And then we have one Archfiend. He is the GOAT. He is the man. Uh, the man with the plan. The reason why this deck is so ridiculously good is because there's still one Archfiend that exists. As long as we have one Archfiend, it doesn't matter. In fact, if the card was at three, it wouldn't really make a difference, except you just, you know, don't have to always draw your starter cards to get to him. But ultimately, Archfiend at one did nothing to the ban list. I mean, did nothing to the deck. And then we have one Eris, we have one Zephyros, and one Destrudo. I apologize, um, my voice is very, um, I guess you could say scratchy, you know, very hoarse. Um, kind of sick, it's four in the morning, just got off work um, not too long ago, and just have been grinding, uh, rebuilding decks, uploading, and stuff like that. So I apologize, you guys, but, you know, nothing I can do about it. So um, we have our one-ups. Eris is important because... By playing Eris, it turns your Armageddon Knight into an ability to search out your Archfiend. Uh, Zephyros is very important because when you have bad hands, you're able to unbreak your hands and combo off with your Zephra, uh, Zephyros and still do your extra link board. And Destrudo is retarded because he goes into Tomahawk, which allows you to expand your horizons. Being that now you're able to go into your combo a lot easier, a lot more accessible. And the only time you need to Tomahawk is when you don't have enough monsters in your hand. If you open your optimal play, which is just Armageddon Knight, Pendulum Call, Dark Worm, off of those three cards, you can do your entire extra link board. Um, and you will not actually need the Destrudo the duration of that combo. But you can go into the Tomahawk and do the Destrudo if, for example, your opponent hand traps you. That's another way. So this deck doesn't really need to always have a call by the grave just to go off. Um, because you can exploit so many different routes with the deck. Uh, if your opponent, for example, ashes your Curios, if you have a Dragon Shrine, you just play Dump Destruido anyways. If your opponent, for example, you know, hits you with an Impermanence or like a Ghost Ogre, well-timed in your Firewall, you can obviously just bounce Firewalls back to the extra deck. You know, there's a lot of ways you can play around hand traps without Call by the Grave. That's why the deck is so awesome, because unlike Gokis, it can do that. Gokis might be able to chain block, but if you Valor or Impermanence them, you know, there's not very much they can do about that. <laughs> That's it for the monsters. We don't play hand traps because this is Infernities. Infernities are quite different from your average deck, my friend. Um, in fact, just the integration of hand traps alone would completely throw off the consistency of the deck, believe me or not. For our spells, we have three copies of Dragon's Ravine, and we also play Triple Dragon Shrine. Uh, this is going to start our spells. We're going to keep going with the spells, and we are going to stop and explain the interactions, possibly, but mainly uh, the reasons why. Uh, after we drop our spells, we have triple Pendulum Call. We have triple Allure of Darkness. We have double Duelist Alliance. We have double Optimus Prime. I know the cards at two. We have one Rhoda. We have one Foolish. We have one Launcher one soul charge and one barrier as the only trap that your deck actually needs it's insane it's so good bro it's so good all right so triple dragons of Veen and triple dragon shrine very important why because you want to get dark worm and destrudo in your graveyard 
every single turn one because that makes your combos easier and more accessible with less resources required and more flex, more finessing, right? We have triple pendulum call. Reason being because this is basically, you know, access to your Recruit Mont. Uh, it's like kind of like a focal play of the deck. Uh, the pure forte of the card is just astronomical, my brother. I mean, this card exceeds logic, bro. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Pendulum Call is better in this deck than it is in a Magician deck. In their, its own deck that the card was crafted for a specific archetype. And it is better in a deck that it doesn't even belong to. That is absurd, my friend. That's very absurd. Triple Pendulum Call. Best starter card. Minus Armageddon. Now, if you have Armageddon in Pendulum Call, you can just do your link, you link board. Um, it, it's, it's, just, it's insane. All you need is just two other monsters in your hand. You can do it. You don't even need Dark Worm at that point. Uh, we have triple or darkness. Your whole deck is dark. You need to filter your hand. You need to get deeper into your deck because there's specific cards that you need to see at specific times. And not being able to see those cards can be a detriment and or impediment on the progression of your combo as you are trying to pretty much get to the point where you have your firewall on the field. Once you have firewall, it becomes a lot more easy. Um, it be, you can make sense out of it without even knowing how the deck operates once you get your firewall on the field. So once you're getting to that point, you have fragile points, you have strong moments in the deck where you know that there's not very many hand traps that can stop you. Um, but once you get to the point of having firewall and being able to combo off with your infirmities, there's very minimum cards that can actually stop you being that firewall can always bounce itself back. You have double Mirage to play around the Ash, Ogre, Impermanence, and Valor issue. And you also are able to search out your extenders through the entire progression of your combo. So insane. Insane deck. Triple Allure. Double Dose Alliance to sub your search your calls. Double Terraform in the center of your ravines. Uh, the Rota for your Armageddon Knights. Your Foolish, because Foolish is a very good util utility toolbox effect. Um, Foolish is the equivalent of Curios. And Sometimes I waste a lot of resources to go into Curio, so it's very nice to just be able to play a Foolish and save my resources, and instead of going into Curios, I can dedicate those resources towards starting my combo early, you know, because when you're making Curios, you hit a point where you're very fragile, and it can be, if your opponent Ash Blossoms your Curios, now it's like, you have to have a Ravine, you have to have a, a Terraforming, or a, a, you know, a Shrine. If you don't have one of those eight cards, and your opponent Ash Blossoms your Curios, Sometimes that means you can't do your full U-Link board. The best you can do is just do a Trigate, co-link by three with your barrier. But you want a U-Link. You don't want them to have their extra deck at all. And, you know, Launcher is absolutely self-explanatory. Uh, I wish this card was at three. It would be redundant. We have Soul Charge because it's amazing. Soul Charge absolutely defies logic as well. And there's no hand trap that you can't play through with Soul Charge minus the Ghost Bell. If they have a Ghost Bell for your Soul Charge, that is very sad. But the cool thing is Soul Charge doesn't pay life points for cost. It targets for cost. You target the number of monsters you want to summon. And then if this card resolves and you summon those, then you pay the life points. The barrier, because it's amazing. It hit, it's got hit to one for a reason. It negates anything, and it's very easy to set up. By having a face-up attack position Infernity Monster and no cards in your hand, this card becomes a better card than Judgment, being that it can negate anything. Now for our extra deck, that's it for the main deck. We have the GOAT Firewall, my brother. I knew the card wasn't going to get banned as much as people said it and much as people were talking about it. If Konami wouldn't ban Dark Magician, they wouldn't ban Firewall. It's a very good logic. They don't ban Ace Monsters. Not once in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! has it ever happened. I don't think it's going to happen. Even as degenerate as they can get because they get worse and worse, it's still just not going to happen. Unfortunately, that's how Konami works. It's good and it's bad, but Firewall being still legal allows cards you know art types and strategies like infernities like gokis like extra link dot decks to kind of still do what they want to do you can still produce a lot of different random ftks because of firewall um the card itself is not as broken as the decks that it gets played in but playing it in certain decks can just bring the ceiling over the top uh then we have gumblar we have curios we have our trigate our unicorn and then we have a lot of link twos. I play 
I doubled up on the service and the Phoenix because in certain combo sequences, you end up needing both of these. And then depending on the trajectory that you're going and sometimes the side of the board that you're working, the second Phoenix comes up. But no matter what, you have to play more than one of each of them because through the sequence of your combo, you are actually transforming one of them into a mermaid so that you can actually just get the down pointing arrow. You're not always going to use mermaid. Some combo sequences, you don't discard for cost for mermaid. You just summon it just to trigger firewall and to get the down pointing arrow to summon in the extra monster zone. So that way you can finish your U-Link board. So that's why I play two of each. And also sometimes you just have to waste them to link climb. So that's why ultimately I was just like, two of each is good. It eliminates a lot of problems. We have the one proxy dragon just because it has the arrows that we need. Uh, a middle of the combo, you immediately turn that proxy into a Gumblar in column number three. Gumblar has the same arrows pointing left and right, and you're going to rip cards out of your opponent's hand without discarding because it will be extra linked. And that's important because Infernities are the kind of deck that when it combos off, you have no cards in hand. So there's nothing you can discard for cards for Gumblar unless you want to search off your Archfiend, waste the search, and then discard one from your opponent's hand, which is not optimal, it's not ideal, and it's not smart. Then we have the Underclock Taker, another link that's pretty easy to go into that has a down pointing arrow so that I can occupy the extra monster zone. Because in certain sequences of your combo, you end up having to link off your mermaid, or sometimes you end up having to link off your unicorn. But no matter what, you need two link monsters that have a down pointing arrow in order to complete your U board and your extra link. And then we have the one mermaid, very important, very focal, um, not just for the Ibli, as you clearly see, I don't have an Ibli or I would be playing it. I didn't want a proxy one either. Uh, so, you know, for certain combos and videos and stuff, I like to proxy my Ibli, but the most important thing is this is a down pointing arrow. It has the effect to decrease all monsters. It just makes your U board a lot harder to break. Then we have Tomahawk, Time Star Magician, and the Odd Eyes Meteor Burst, some with the extra deck. Um, sometimes in the middle of my combo, I like to go Time Star to search the Summoner Monk. Why? Because it will give me the perfect discard fodder for my Mermaid. That way I can discard not my Necromancer, but the Summoner Monk and uh, trigger my Firewall. At the same time, Firewall, Chain Link 2, Chain Link 1, Mermaid, discard Monk for cost, having two monsters in hand, special summon your Necromancer, and then Mermaid will special the Ibli, and then you just link off of the Ibli, and then you do your Necromancer, special Archfiend, continue your combo. So yeah, Time Gazers, I mean, Time Star is really broken, and then also you use him to search your Monk to get your combo started, so he can be, uh, you know, in the middle of your combo or the start of your combo, but either way, he's always going to be an incredible card. Really nice as a part of your arsenal and your toolbox. And uh, now with that out the way, I'm actually going to show you guys some really cool uh, little combo where you can do the U-Link. Let me double check first, see how long the video is right now. 17 minutes in. All right, so at this point, um, if you do not want to see the combo, if you don't want to see how the deck can extra link, you can absolutely just turn the video off and stop watching. But for those of you who are curious of, you know, seeing how the extra link works and, you know, just how the deck functions overall, just stay in your seat. We're going to go ahead and grab um, one of the better openings for this deck is obviously with Pendulum Call. And one of your starter cards, it can be, you know, Armageddon Knight or Monk. I prefer the Knight uh, just because Monk, you know, while it's great and it's always going to be live for the most part, um, sometimes you need to discard for cost for call and then you still need to keep your scales. So, you know, and then also at the same time, you know, once you discard for cost for call and discard for cost for monk, you have very minimal resources and monsters to work with. So it's better for, to start off with uh, knight sometimes. You really only go into monk when it's like, dang, there's no other way that I can get to Archfiend. Uh, and then we're going to grab a dank worm, right? And also in the middle of this combo, if your opponent happens to Ash Blossom your Curios, if you drew a Terraforming Ravine or Shrine, you can just dump your Destrudo and completely ignore the fact that your opponent Ash your Curios or Veiler your Curios or, you know, uh, Impermanence your Curios. Because when you make a card like Curios, I promise you 10 times out of 10, your opponent is going to spill their guts and show you exactly what hand trap they have. Because a card like Curios... No smart duelist would ever want to let it resolve because it's just such a good card. It's like when you make it, obviously this man's trying to do something with that Curious, and I don't want to see what happens at the end of it. <clears throat> and then just going to grab some random cards. Um, it doesn't really matter what they are. Um, for example, let's just say we have the Zephyros, right? Uh, we don't even need to actually have the Zephyros, uh, but let's just say he's one of the random cards. We're not even going to actually use him. 
there's not really anything you can use them for except just you know as a name so in fact let's just let's just keep it like this and uh if as long as there's a monster in our hand as a random card that's good too so pendulum call dumb dark worm dark worm's graveyard effect is going to uh net us our first search of the turn if your opponent shows you the uh the drone lock bird that's where you just you know extend handshake Let's see here. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the Cheerio and I'm also gonna grab the uh, Magicians that I'm searching. Get that plus one off of our call. Two turn into uh, three. Okay, then we're gonna normal our Armageddon Knight. All right. And we are going to Foolish Burial our Eris, using Eris to search our Archfiend. Okay. And then we're going to scale it up. Gate zero. Black Fang. Pimp Summon. Not Pendulum. Pimp Summon. Uh, two. Chain Link. Two. Harmonizing Chain Link. One. Archfiend. Uh, Archfiend is going to go ahead and uh, resolve as well as Harmonizing. Harmonizing is going to bring out our Purple Poison. Archfiend is going to bring out our Necromancer. Let's grab the DT Necromancer, my friend. You know why? Because DT is awesome. Okay. So we got that. I really should uh take some like hot tea or something to clear my throat up. Very, very hoarse voice right now. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to transform this purple poison and this harmonizing into Time Star. And we're going to grant ourselves the search of Summoner Monk. So we have free discard fodder for the mermaid. That way we don't have to discard a necromancer. Because when you do the infernity combo, you have no cards in hand. So every time you search, it's the one card you need off of the Archfiend to continue extending your combo plays. So we're going to search out on a Summoner Monk, which is an expendable discard outlet that we can afford to lose and it will not hurt. And uh, next, if you pay attention, we have a Dark Spellcaster, a Dark Warrior, a Dark Dragon, and a Dark Fiend. Four different types, but same attribute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the one that no, I know cannot hit the grave. Um, I'm also going to get rid of my Archfiend. And I'm going to get rid of that Time Star. All right. The Dark Worm's going to go to the extra deck. And then I'm going to go ahead and link up into my uh, Curios. And I really like to start on this side of the board, Curios. Curios' effect is going to send a Strudo. And we're going to go off with our combo like that. So because we're working solely off of the three cards, and we're pretending as if there's no other monsters in our hand and stuff like that, we're going to rely on the uh, the Tomahawk play. But in other scenarios, like I said, if we Pendulum Summon just one more monster, or really just um, if we had uh, more monsters in hand in general to start up um, before Pendulum Summoning, because you can do that, we basically would not have had to make the Curios. But different hands call for different combo sequences and different steps for you to take. And in this particular one, we're going to do the Tomahawk play. So the Shrewd Ope half targeting the Armageddon. Uh, we're going to go ahead and synchro. I'm just going to put the Shrewdo back where I had him in organization of the deck. Because I'm not going to shuffle or anything like that. Because this is just an example combo. Uh, so Armageddon Knight is going to go to the grave. Meteor Burst is going to go ahead and summon out that gate zero. We're going to go into Tomahawk. Uh, then we're going to use Tomahawk's Broken Effect. We're going to summon out five. No, I'm sorry. Four tokens. All right. We got to be careful with these tokens because they cannot hit the grave. So you can't use them to trigger your firewall. But what we can do here is we can go ahead and transform that Tomahawk and uh, one of the tokens into our Phoenix. So now we're down to three tokens instead of four. We can turn one token and Curios into our firewall, right? And we also still have two more tokens to work with. What we're gonna do at this point is we are going to turn our Phoenix into Mermaid. I'm gonna proxy my Ibli for the sake of just this example. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna still discard for cost no matter what chain link Mermaid, mermaid is. Discarding for cost is a mandatory maintenance kind of thing. So chain link one, Mermaid chain link two, firewall. Uh, discard for costs. Uh, Firewall is going to go ahead and summon our Necromancer from hand. The uh, other two tokens, let's put them in column number three and <gasps> column number five. So this is in column number uh, four. So we got five, four, three, two, and then one. 
then we're gonna bring out our Ibli. So we're gonna make Soul Charge our Ibli. So Ibli is gonna go over here now where Firewall points to. We will then get rid of the final, uh, well, we have two tokens left. So we're gonna get rid of that token and uh, the Ibli. And we're gonna go ahead and summon our uh, Proxy Dragon. We have one more token too. We're gonna give our opponent that Ibli, by the way. We are using her effect. We have one more token. So we still have resources to work with. Uh, we have Archfiend, but the token actually doesn't matter. We don't even need it, but since we have it, we're gonna use it, right? Uh, summon out Archfiend. Uh, Archfiend's effect is gonna search out our Necromancer. And please remind me in the middle of this combo to get rid of that firewall and turn it into a Cerberus so that I can actually end on the Cold Link Trigate. Because last time I did this, I ended up not getting rid of my firewall, keeping them even though I was done using him. And that resulted in me not being able to co-link my Trigate, but still being able to get the barrier with Archfiend. But it was just, it was terrible, Turi. It was terrible, Turi. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we are going to link with these and the proxy. And we're going to summon our Gumblart very early, very early, my friend. Trigger Firewall again. Summon Archfiend, uh, summon uh, Necromancer. Necromancer is going to bring back Archfiend. We're going to search out another Necromancer, the final Necromancer. Uh, then what we're going to do at that point is we are going to link with the Necromancer and the Archfiend. And we're going to go into our service. Uh, chain link two firewall to special command. Chain link one firewall uh, to bounce. And what we're going to do is we're going to put back our proxy, our Phoenix... And we're gonna bounce back our Armageddon Knight, all right? And then we're gonna proceed with our combo. We're gonna special summon our Armageddon Knight, uh, activate his effect. This is just flexing. I don't need to do this, but I'm just doing it. We're gonna dump uh, Zephros, right? We're gonna bounce Black Fang. Then we're gonna special summon Zephros. Then we're gonna activate Black Fang and scale anyways. And then we're going to link summon with the uh, Cerberus and the Zephros and the Armageddon Knight. Really, we don't need to do that. Let's let's just link with these. Let's make that Trigate Sun. Firewall's effect will uh, special summon the Arch the Necromancer. And uh, oh yeah, you know what? We were supposed to do that. We're gonna get rid of all those. <laughs> My bad, you guys. I'm very tired. It's, it's pushing five in the morning, my brother. All right, so now we're going to use the Necromancer. We're going to bring back Archfiend. This gets very, very um, repetitive. You know, you're just, you're, just, you're just searching off your Archfiend just endlessly. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, complete the U. Going to link it to Underclock. Bam, U board, done. We've already extra linked, so we can stop right here right they already you know we've you linked them we've already actually linked, but we're gonna keep going because we want to attempt to load trigate and also uh attempt gumblar so we're gonna summon that we're gonna gumblar rip two from hand uh then we're gonna trigger mirage what mirage is going to do is it is going to actually uh bring out double necromancer no we're gonna bring back uh necromancer archfiend archfiend's effect on summon it's gonna search our other Mirage. Um, wait, no, not Mirage, my apologies. We're actually gonna search Launcher at this point. All right, okay. No, 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 no. We are, we're, we're gonna search Mirage. Okay, we're gonna link with these two. We're gonna go into Phoenix. We're gonna special Mirage. We don't need Firewall anymore. So now at this point, you see our extra deck, we only have four cards left. Now at this point, we're gonna link with the Firewall and the Phoenix. We're gonna go into service. We're gonna sack off our Mirage. Uh, Mirage is gonna bring back Necromancer Archfiend. Uh, Archfiend's gonna search for the barrier. Well, we're gonna search for the launcher because we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna complete Try uh, Trigate as well. We're going to put a Phoenix over there. 
Uh, then we're going to activate Launcher. We're going to sack it off. We're going to summon Archfiend. We're going to search Barrier. And there you have it. The board is complete. Um, we could summon Unicorn just to be flashy if we really wanted to. We could have just kept extending. But I don't think we're going to need the extra draws for next turn. I don't think there is going to be a next turn. So you've got the protection for Phoenix. you got the, uh, you know, modification and attack stats through Mermaid. you got the protection from service. you got the double negation. Your opponent's lost two cards in their hand. If you wanted to take it a step further in the middle of the so combo sequence, you could have transformed uh, the underclock and one of your main monster zone monsters into a Griffin if you play Griffin just to make the board a lot more powerful um, being that you know Gumblar will just transform into Griffin right then you have Griffin you have Phoenix service mermaid you have a complete um, not soft lock now you have a, a strong lock you'll have monster effects that are special summon pretty much shut down because they're extra linked anyways they have an Ibley. it's not like they're gonna get any special summon monster effects then you have barrier you have the barrier being live a lot of inferno players misplay by searching barrier and thinking they could use it without an archfiend archfiend's here he's in attack position it's completely live and it has to be a face up attack position that's why we summon archfiend in attack even though he's losing a thousand for mermaid you just need the negation so you have the double negate they rip two you know that's pretty much the combo you guys that concludes the deck profile i hope that you guys enjoyed it there's a lot of different ways that you can do the combo uh, a lot of sequences that you can follow. You can change um, a lot of things. You can change the style, the elegance. You can even change the end result. Um, the end result will always be a U-Link board, but you can change the end result, meaning that you can summon different extra deck monsters to fill the same exact zones that a U-board occupies, if that makes sense at all. Um, and you know what? We also would like for um, our opponent to just scoop after that, okay? We don't want them to even have hope. We don't want them to actually think that they can play through that board. We just want them to scoop. The sole purpose of making that kind of a board is not for your opponent to try to brainstorm on how they can break it. It's just to make them lose all of their morale, lose hope of winning, and just give up so that we can go to game two. That's the whole purpose of it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I love you guys. Uh, be safe. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Uh, don't try this at home. I'm just playing. Definitely try this at home. And, uh, yeah, you guys, I've got a lot more content coming for you. Um, this is not Gokis. You know, any deck that's doing some shenanigans like Gokis are doing, they're obviously doing it in a very different way. And, you know, it's not as consistent in the sense that we don't have all the starter cards to get to the combo like Goki do. Gokis does. Don't get me wrong. If you look at my deck, we do have a ton of starter cards. More than half of our deck is starter cards. If you count the Rota, the Terraformings, the Alliance, uh, the Pendulum Calls, the Shrines, the Ravines, the Monks, the Armageddons, you know, you have a lot of starter cards, but it's just not as much as Goki's does. Goki's entire deck is really full of starters, just starters and extenders, starters and extenders, and then a small portion is Hand Traps and Called by the Graves. This deck is just starters, and then the rest of, that are not starters are all just extenders. Um, Infernities do have more extenders than Goki's do. Uh, Goki's extenders come from what? Goki Rematch and Firewall. This deck has Mirage. It has <gasps> Necromancer. It has Launcher. It has Soul Charge. It has Zephros. It has Destrudo. You know, it has a lot of extenders. It has a lot more than Goki's do. So in that aspect, Zeph uh, Zephros, Infernities are better than Goki's in the term of the longevity and the grind game synergy. Um, they can outlast, you know. But in terms of how consistently they can pump out the U-Link, yeah, Gokis do a better job at that. But thank you guys again. Uh, that's pretty much going to conclude it. And I've got more videos coming to you guys. So go ahead and uh, stay in your seats, if you will. Peace.